Today on Maker's Muse, we're reviewing one of, if not the cheapest 3D printer you can currently buy, whether it's in a kit or ready to run. That's right guys, today I'm looking at the 101 Hero. Let's get started. Ah, oh, welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So a little bit of history. 2016 was the year of the cheap 3D printers on crowdfunding websites like Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And I featured quite a lot of them on this channel. We had the Trinus, we had the Mini Toy, we had the M3D Pro, which wasn't that cheap, and many others. But we had this thing as well. So the 101 Hero caught my eye as being a ridiculously cheap 3D printer. Specifically, I got the Early Bird Special at 49 US dollars plus shipping, totaling to $79 US, complete for this machine to show up at my door randomly a few weeks ago here in Australia. So what is it about this machine that makes it so special and what do I think about it as an actual 3D printer? Well, let's get into it, starting with the specs. So surprisingly, the build quality of the 101 Hero is actually quite good, despite being such a low cost machine. It's made from injection molded plastic, so it is pretty flimsy, but the injection molding quality on it is actually really quite nice. And although the 101 team have been pretty terrible at any sort of updates on Kickstarter or other crowdfunding websites, they did post photos of their tooling and it did look pretty mint, so props on that. The build volume supposedly on the 101 Hero is 150 diameter. It is a Delta Robot uh, style 3D printer. That means it has a diameter and a height. So 150 millimeters by 100 millimeters, supposedly again in the build volume. However, I have not been able to reach those limits as yet. The machine itself takes 1.75 millimeter filament, which is quite common and actually all of my machines run 1.75 millimeter filament. And supposedly according to their campaign, they claimed it could do PLA, hips, and ABS. However, as this machine does not have any kind of heated bed, you are never gonna really print anything major in ABS, apart from maybe a tiny thing, or you'll get warping or delamination. And same goes for hips. Hips will also most likely warp when you try to print anything substantial. So you're really only gonna be doing PLA on this thing. The bed is glass and it's held in with these three uh, alligator clips. And it does come with tape. So it comes with this roll of tape that you're meant to put onto the bed to help the print adhere down to it. Basically just get rid of this crap. Um, it sucks. Uh, <laughs> basically, if, you're, if your level's not perfect, which it won't be because it's too much slop, you'll dig into the tape and it either won't stick or it will rip it. Instead, I recommend using something like this. This is called Magigoo and it's a purpose-made uh, 3D print adhesive for your print bed. It's basically a type of glue and it's purpose made to help uh, print it here. And as you can see here, this is direct on glass with no heating and it works really well. Uh, you don't have to use this stuff. You can use uh, some brands of glue sticks. You can use hairsprays, but basically get rid of the tape. It's terrible. And really, I think the one-on-one hero team don't even know that solutions like that exist. Otherwise they wouldn't have bothered including it in the box. But how do they get the price point so low? Well, that comes down to how they've engineered the electronics and the quite clever way they've done the mechanics of the machine. So it has these pylons and they actually call it, they call it the pylon 3D printer. And being a Delta, each of these is identical and it has a motor carriage with two rails and a timing belt which drives the carriage up and down. This is linked to your extruder by two arms and so six arms in total, moving those each uh, three pylons independently, that's how you get your movement. But to get to this price point, they had to make some sacrifices and they looked to the 3D printing pen market to do it. So you can buy 3D printing pens now for very little money and they include in them very small motors for feeding plastic forwards. So the 101 Hero team saw those and thought, well, why don't we just build a 3D printer around them? So what does that mean? Well, this is a NEMA or NEMA 17 stepper motor. Most 3D printers on the market run these motors for your X, Y, and Z or Z axes, as well as running the extruder, whether being a direct drive or a Bowden mounted with a Bowden tube. Now they may be shorter or even longer. They may have a gear reduction, but this is kind of the standard that the 3D printing market has settled on. 
This is the style of stepper motor that the 101 Hero uses. This thing is tiny. This is a small geared stepper motor, which are commonly known on eBay as the 28 BYJ-48 stepper. They are about a dollar or two dollars each, including shipping direct from China. So these have a tiny stepper motor inside, which drives the gears and gets a reduction to the shaft. So these are normally one to 64, I believe, but the ones in the 101 Hero are different. So these motors are gutless. They have almost no torque. They are very slow because of the gear reduction needed to give them any kind of usable movement. And they're fragile in the terms of they have plastic gears. So if something jams, then well, your, your uh, motor's pretty well done. And the problem with the 101 Hero in its rollout has been that people have been receiving these machines and the motors have been either dead from the factory or they've been breaking them while trying to learn how to use the machine. And number 17, if you jam this, it will probably lose some steps, make a grindy, grinding noise, and that's about it. But the motors in this, if they uh, do even arrive working, if you jam them up or let them overheat, then they're gonna either jam and seize or you'll break some of the gears inside and it will cease working, which seems to be a common story in the Kickstarter comments thread. So for those of you who watched my live stream putting together the 101 Hero, you would have seen how much of a disaster that was. Now, it was a because of a few reasons that it was a disaster, not so much because of the machine, because I now have this working, but it was also an internet issue. But this machine did arrive with a broken limit switch. Going back to that whole issue of the motors stalling, they will break. If I had run this without education, knowing that to look out for that limit switch being broken, then I would have broken this machine and with the support that 101 Hero are currently offering, which is pretty much seems to be non-existent, I wouldn't have seen any replacement parts anytime soon for that problem. However, I have now gotten some prints off this machine, but let me first explain how I did it. This was the first print that I did on the 101 Hero, downloaded from their own website, 101 Land. So the idea of running the 101 Hero for kids is that you're meant to get an SD card that it meant supposedly comes with, mine didn't come with an SD card, and you load on this, this file from their website, pop it in, and it starts printing. So if you open up these files in a text editor, they're actually just G-code, and actually surprisingly sliced with Simplify 3D, which actually kind of uh, violates their user agreement. But anyway, I decided to print this Rook, and it did print. This is the first successful print I got off the 101 Hero, but it has under extrusion through the roof. And that was the first major issue with my machine. The actual extruder was not feeding enough plastic through it. So I cracked it open and found that there was two major issues. First, the idler bearing was completely seized up because the plastic was too tight around it and it was not uh, freely rolling, which meant it was putting additional friction on the feeder gear and it was jamming up. Secondly, it just wasn't engaging enough. It wasn't pushing enough into the filament, even if I tightened up the screws on the extruder door fully tight. To fix this, I got some cardboard and put it behind the idler bearing. And actually, for the most part, it fixed my extrusion issues. And by doing that, I went from prints like this rocket, where you can see it's just missed entire layers, to prints like this crystal, which actually completed perfectly complete without any missed extrusion. Now I say perfect uh, as a relative term because the accuracy you get off the 101 Hero is pretty rubbish. And that's mostly due to the amount of slop the mechanism has. As I said, being out of, made out of plastic, the whole thing wobbles like insanely. But uh, there's, there's just too much slop in the axes and also the motors are too poor quality to give you precise prints. Now there is some hacks you can do. I have added these rubber bands to help tighten the pylons, uh, the, so the linkages, and there's a lot of, there's a very active actual Facebook group, the unofficial 101 Hero group. But beyond that, don't expect accurate prints off this machine. And also don't expect fast prints. Most machines I run print at 60 millimeters per second. Again, thanks to the larger motors. This machine, you'd be lucky to get anything above 15. I have pushed it to 20, but sometimes it will lose steps. And some people on the forums are reportedly printing at five millimeters per second in an attempt to get better print quality. Yeah, that makes something like this last like four hours. Now, in terms of running the machine, I've actually started running it tethered through Simplify 3D and have made a profile that I've been using. So some other people have been having issues with it when I posted it on the Facebook group, but for me, it's been working well, and I will link to that 
in the video description if you want to try it out. As I said, the machine uses tiny step motors and that includes the actual extruder assembly. So when you're feeding filament into it, you need to make sure the path is very low friction. So here you can see I've got an external spool holder that runs on this. This was not printed on the 101 Hero. This is printed on the Chidi Tech X1. There's no way the 101 Hero could print that spool holder. But uh, you need something low friction so when it's feeding into the motor, it doesn't snag up and leave lead to even more issues with under extrusion. So where does that leave us with the 101 Hero? Well, to be honest, I am amazed that this machine even exists in front of me because this was a Kickstarter project I backed on a whim, expecting to never receive anything. I have backed projects in the past with far more funding and loftier goals on simpler products and still not receive them. This thing exists. This thing is in front of me, and for the most part, it actually works. Sure, there's tons of them out there that are broken, they're arriving with cracked glass beds, broken motors, all sorts of issues, but there are ones out there that are printing. However, does that mean I recommend it as a 3D printer? No, not a chance. This machine will never produce decent results for everyday 3D printing. It's too slow, the accuracy is too poor, and you have to spend a lot of time and money tweaking it. And keeping in mind the price point, how much is your time actually worth? Why not spend another $100 and get another Chinese kit like the Tron XY or even the ANET A8, which will give you a far superior printing experience than this machine ever could? No, instead, this machine marks a milestone in 3D printing history for me, and it's why I actually bought it. This is the first legit attempt at making a 3D printer as a toy because the price point makes sense. Even at $99 US, it's still cheaper than a complicated Lego kit and it offers a lot more in terms of opportunities for a child, but not in its current iteration. Maybe three down the track, the 101 Hero version three, that's when we might start seeing these machines actually make sense as a toy. But in its current state, it actually deserves to be in a museum in my opinion, as the first ever low-cost machine aimed at kids that actually exists. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video here on Maker's Muse. And I'm sorry if you're disappointed about my opinion on the 101 Hero, but you do get what you pay for in this material world, and really you didn't pay that much for this machine if you did get it. So that's the experience that you get. If you enjoyed this video here on Maker's Muse and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews. We have loads more coming this year. This is our new dedicated studio. We do this full time and I'd love to have you on board. My name's Angus and thanks for watching this video here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye.